everyone a beautiful and blessed day to all of you. May God send His Holy Spirit to guide you as you fulfill your call to be His future healthcare warriors. May I also be used as an instrument to be your guide in your nursing journey. May you become the best nurses in the future with knowledge and wisdom to know the difference between right and wrong. A nurse with a heart that cares, a hand that heals, and a word that meant a wounded heart and comfort worried mind. Okay, so this week, let's continue with our physical examination. Alright, so this week, we will discuss about the physical examination of the breast and axillae. Before proceeding with our discussion, let me again present to you this disclaimer slides. The following are the learning objectives of this presentation. At the end of this presentation, the student will be able to identify the structures and function of the breast and axillae, perform accurate health history taking of the breast and axillae, demonstrate how to perform a clinical breast examination, document a complete breast and axillae assessment, using information from the health history and the physical examination. Describe the measure for prevention or early detection of breast cancer. Okay, as usual, before we proceed with our discussion, let's have a review first of the anatomy and physiology of the breast. Okay, so in this particular image, this is the image of the female breast. Of course, alam na alam nyo na yan of how the breast looks like. Okay, the, alam natin that the breast lies against the anterior thoracic wall. Okay, it extends from the second rib, okay, down to the sixth rib. And from the sternum, across to the mid-axillary line. So, looking at the breast, okay, uh, you can see that it's round or oval in sh shape. However, the real shape of the breast is rectangular and it's not actually round, okay, because the breast overlies the pectoralis major muscle, okay, and it's Inferior margin, serratus anterior. Okay. So this is, these are the other parts or structures of the breast. And this was discussed already in your anatomy and physiology. Okay. So the breast is hormonally a sensitive tissue uh, that usually responds to the changes of the monthly uh, menstrual cycle, especially, of course, for the females and also in aging. Okay, so the adult breast, the female breast, uh, may be soft but it feels granular or nodular or lumpy. So, this uneven texture is normal and may be termed as a physiologic nodularity or fibrocystic breast, especially pag malapit na yung menstruation. Okay. So, the nodularity usually increases uh, before menses. This is the time 
when the breast often enlarge and become tender or even painful. Okay, so the tip of the breast is an area called areola. Okay, there is an areola and in the center is the nipple. Okay. So, uh, the breast has 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts that empty, okay, this is the ducts, into a depression at the top of the nipple. So, each duct here, so there, these are the ducts, no? Leads from the alveoli within the breast called lobules. Yeah, the mga lobules. Okay? And then, this is where the milk is secreted. Okay. These ducts and lobules form the granular tissue. Yeah. So, uh, the fibrous connective tissue usually provides the structural support in the form of fibrous bonds or what we call suspensory ligaments that are connected both the skin from the skin and the underlying lying fascia. So, uh, the adipose tissue or the fat uh, surrounds the breast. And after menopause, uh, there is a decreased number of lobules uh, that are noted. So, uh, the glandular tissue atrophies and usually replaced with fat. Kaya, nagsasab na rin, no? Pagdating na, pag may age na. So, here, the surface of the areola, again, has a uh, um, what we call rounded elevations formed by a sebaceous gland, okay, sweet glands, and other accessory areolar glands. And sometimes and there are few hairs that are seen on the areola. So both the nipple and the areola are well supplied with hair smooth muscle, okay that contracts to express milk from the ductal system during breastfeeding. Okay, we have here an image or an illustration of what we call super numerary nipple. Okay, so um, this is a common or a, a common condition or a minor birth defect that consists of an extra nipple. So, as you can see, there are four nipples, no? Uh, to each side, okay, in this picture. So, that appears on the chest, okay? Um, most of the supernumerary uh, nipple uh, do not cause symptoms or complications. So, sometimes now, they are just small, like a mole then, and then sometimes you cannot detect that it's a super numerally uh, nipple. So it is located along with the milk line. Again, only small nipple and areola are usually present. And as mentioned, it is mistaken for common mole, kalamomola. So it has no pathologic significance. Yeah. Moving on to the anatomy and physiology of the male breast. So the male breast is chiefly uh, has a small nipple and areola. So it overlies the disc of undeveloped breast tissue. That's why hindi halos mo siya makita. It is uh, maybe difficult to distinguish male breast tissue from surrounding muscles of the chest wall. So, this is the image of a male breast. So, very konti lang yung adipose or fat, no tissue. Kaya, maliit lang siyang tinan. Okay? Um, there is um, abnormality uh, for the male kung saan lumalaki yung breast 
what we call um, gynecomasia. Okay. Okay, moving on to the lymphatic system. Okay, so meron din nung nag-drain sa ating um, breast. Okay, so the lymphatic system, again, is part of our immune system that protects our body against um, illness causing invaders and it also uh, removes cellular waste. Okay. So, in this image of the breast, there are different lymph nodes, okay. Uh, the lymphatics from most of the breast, okay, drains towards the axilla, okay. So, the drains a lot towards the axilla, okay. Of all the axillary uh, lymph nodes, the central, the central nodes are the most palpable. So, they lie along the chest wall. Okay, and another lymph nodes is the pectoral anterior. Okay. So, it is located along the lower border of the pectoralis major inside the anterior axillary fold. So, these uh, nodes drain the anterior chest wall and much of the breast. So, she will be drained. So, the subscapular nodes or... Uh, Subscapular posterior is located along the lateral border of the of the scapula, so uh, they drain the posterior chest wall and the portion of the arms. Okay, another lymph nodes is the lateral lymph nodes. Uh, it is located along the upper humerus. Okay, they drain most of the arms. Okay, the lip drains, no, lahat naman ng lip no, drains from the central, here, from the central axillary nodes to the infraclavicular or supraclavicular nodes. Okay, so not all of the lymphatics of the breast drain into the axilla. Okay, malignant cells from a breast cancer may spread directly to the infraclavicular nodes. Okay, kaya pag may nakapa dito tayo, medyo suspicious na. Okay? So, let's proceed to the health history taking. Please take note of the following common or concerning symptoms. If you found the following, of course, you have to, have to focus on your findings to Take note and, of course, to refer to the physician for findings of breast lump or mass, breast pain or discomfort, change in shape, nipple discharge, edema, rashes, scaling, dimpling, retraction, gynecomasia. Yeah. So, moving on to our health history. Uh, you have to start no uh, the following questions you can ask your client have you noticed any changes in your breast okay for the lump uh, do you feel lump or masses okay so if the patient uh, say for example there is a lump you can you can now utilize your old card to continue with your um, health history taking, okay, to get more data about the complaint of the client. Uh, for example, so onset, you can ask the client, when did you uh, first notice the lump? And then for the location, in which breast is the lump? Uh, sinabi niya, on the right. So where it, where it is located, or you can ask the client to point it saan yun na feel. For the duration, you can ask the client, does the lump remain at all times or does it comes and go? Nawawala ba? So, if it, if it comes and go, uh, you have to ask the client, kailan siya present and when does it disappear? Disappear. Yeah. For the characteristic and symptoms, you may ask the client, uh, what does the lump feel like? Okay. So, you ask the client to describe it. 
So for associated manifestation, so you can ask the client what else happened when the lamp is present. Okay. So same now, you can ask, uh, you can use old card if the patient complain of pain or discomfort. Uh, is there any changes in the shape? Is there discharge, edema, rashes, or scaling? Uh, is there dimpling or retraction? Yeah. So you can, you can use again your old card. For the past history, you may ask the client if she or he is. Uh, she is taking medications or MRT or magnetic resonance tomography or taking oral contraceptives. Yan. So, or uh, is she taking other medications? You have to write down all the medications that your patient is taking. So, pregnancies, how many times you can use your OB scoring to, to check for a pregnancies. Menstrual history. Okay, uh, you can ask uh, when is the very first uh, age uh, of menstruation or minor, a uh, previous history of breast or uh, reproductive cancer. Yan. So, previous breast biopsy, meron ba? So, nag breast self examination ba sa patient or nagpa consult sa doctor for clinical breast examination? or nag-undergo ba si patient ng mammogram or magnetic resonance imaging. Okay. For the family history, you can, you can ask your patient if there is a family history of breast cancer from the parents, grandparents, siblings, okay, or children, yan. As for the genetic information or testing, family history of reproductive cancer or breast cancer testing. Yan. And then the lifestyle habits. You can ask the client if the client is alcoholic. Um, the frequency of using alcohol or drinking alcohol. The physical activity. Okay. After having your health history, let us now proceed to the physical examination. For the female breast, you have to explain the procedure to the client of what you are going to do. So, as much as possible, there should be a chaperone. Okay? So, examine uh, the patient at least uh, 5 to 7 days after the onset of menses, the very first day of menstruation. It can count niya, uh, saka siya magpapacheck dapat, no? 5 to 7 days. And then the first uh, technique that you will use is inspection. You will use your sense of sight, okay? You can ask the client to sit down and the strobe to wait. So, they remove yung kanyang dressing or undress, okay? And then you observe for any skin uh, changes, symmetry, contour, or if there is any retractions. Okay. okay, to properly or correctly assess the, the rest of the patient, you have to uh, ask the client to put her arm on the side. Okay, so again, the first technique that you will use is inspection. Okay, you have to inspect for the appearance of the skin. If there is redness uh, for a light, light complexion uh, client or there is a deeper pigmentation in a dark skin client that could be a sign of a local infection or inflammatory carcinoma. Okay, so if there is thickening or a prominent pores, it could suggest a breast cancer, no? Ano ba itsura ng thickening and prominent pores? It, it looks like orange, orange peel, yan. Because it might be a sign of lymphatic obstruction. So, you have to, to observe also for the size and symmetry of the breast, 
of course, uh, the size of the breast should be uh, it should be symmetrical, not only the 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 breast but the I mean the part of the breast also. And we have to observe the areola, the the nipple. It should be it should have symmetrical size. Okay. So uh, observe for the contour of the breast. Okay. You have to look uh, for any changes. Okay, such as baka may masses dyan, or dimpling, okay, or there is flattening, okay, compare, if you compare uh, both sides of the breast, left and right, okay. So, uh, another, uh, another important thing that you have to observe for the inspection is the characteristics of the nipple. Okay, you have to check for the size again of the nipple. Okay, it should be symmetrical. The shape of the nipple should not be inverted. The direction okay, in which it points out, there should be no rashes or ulceration. Or you have to check if there is any discharge. Okay, so upon infection, inspection pa lang tayo. So check to to check if there is um, dimpling or any retraction of the breast. You may ask the client to to raise the hands, okay, and then uh, put the hands or press the hands on the hips. Uh, that is to contract the pectoralis muscles, and then you inspect the breast and the contour. Of the breast of each position so you observe if there is dimpling or retraction of the breast so if there is uh, it could be a sign again of underlying cancer okay So, for patient with a large breast or pendulous breast, uh, it is useful to let your patient stand and then lean forward. So, parang yuyu po siya. Uh, supported, of course, with the back of the chair. So, this position will reveal an asymmetry of the breast. So, you can check if it is symmetrical or not or if there is a problem with the nipple, or if there is any retraction, okay? So again, if there is retraction of the nipple and areola, uh, it suggests an underlying cancer. Remember that there are only two techniques or cardinal technique used in physical examination of the breast. And these are the inspection and the other one is palpation. So after your inspections, it's now the time for you to do palpation. Okay, you have to use your sense of touch. Okay, so palpation is best performed when the breast tissue is flattened. So, you have to place your client in supine position for you to check the lateral portion, the medial portion, and to check for the consistency of the tissues. So, the consistency of the tissues varies widely. So, it depends in the part of the uh, relative uh, firmer glandular tissue. Okay. Diba? So, meron tayong tinatawag na physiologic nodularity that usually present parang may nodules, no? Increasing before menses. Okay. Or, there is presence of tenderness. You have to check if the, the cause of tenderness is because of premenstrual uh, fullness, di ba? Bago magmenstruation. So, if there is no nodules, you have to palpate it carefully you have to check okay you have to check between uh, you have to check uh, both sides of the breast okay so 
if there is a nodules that you have noticed during your palpation, so make sure to document it. Uh, which breast it is in the left? Is it in the right? So what quadrant of the breast? So may quadrant tayo. So mamaya, ituturo natin yung um, 12 o'clock. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na 12 o'clock. So para masabi mo which area of the breast talaga nakita yung mass or nodule. So you have to take note or document the size in centimeters. The shape, is it round or cystic? Is it this light? Is it irregular? Okay. Yung consistency ba na, na nodules or mass, is it soft, firm, or hard? So, yun ang mga i-check natin. Is there a tenderness kapag na-touch yung nodules? Okay, proceeding with our palpation. So, this is the technique, no? Uh, in palpating the breast. So, again, you have to palpate the breast. Uh, pwede in circular motion. Uh, but this time, no, you have to palpate the breast in a rectangle um, area. Yan. So, you have to start from here. You follow the, you follow the, the arrows, Okay. You have to start from here, extend to the clavicle, uh, to the in, to the inframm, inframmary fold, okay, to the lower bra line, okay, and then from the midsternal, okay, to the posterior, hanggang dito, no, midsternal to the posterior axillary line. So I have, you have to follow it like this. Tapos pwede yung pa circular siya, no. Yan, up, yan, so ganun siya. So, a thorough examination of the breast actually will really uh, take time and focus. Kapag first time ka, medyo, you need to practice pa. Okay. So, remember that when you press the breast, it should be gentle, no? Sla. Dapat gentle lang yung pag-press mo. Okay. And then, you have to use your finger pads. Okay, finger pads yung gamitin of the second, third, and fourth fingers. Okay. You have to keep your fingers together, no? Habang ina, ano mo, habang pinapakiramdaman mo yung mass. Okay. So... Okay, so... Uh, you have to remember to document your findings. Okay, for the nodules, you have to uh, document of which quadrant did you find the uh, nodules. Okay, so look at this example. No, these are the quadrants of the breast. You have to divide into four quadrants. Okay, the upper inner quadrant, and then the upper outer quadrant, the lower outer quadrant, and the the lower inner quadrant. Okay. And then you can also take note by a face of the clock. Okay. Paano ba yun? So this is 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. For example, you found the mass in this area. So you have to document that mass noted on the upper inner quadrant at 2 o'clock. So the size is around uh, point. Uh, point 0.8 or point 0.5 cm. Okay. So, you have to measure as well kung how far from the nipple using a centimeter. Now, moving on to the physical examination of the male breast. So, Kung ano yung technique that you use for the female, uh, of course, same technique pa rin here, dito. Okay, but for the male breast, again, you have to check for the nipple and areola if it is symmetrical. Okay, um, is there a presence of nodules, a swelling, ulcerations, okay, obesity, or gynecomasia? 
Okay. The examination of the male breast uh, may be brief, but it is important. Brief lang kasi hindi naman siya malaki. No? Madalit siyang makapa. Okay. So, however, uh, it is also important to check the, the, the male breast kasi meron din tayong um, case of breast cancer for male. However, there is only 1% of breast cancer cases for the for the male no compared to female okay so when we say gynecomastia uh, the breast is enlarged due to uh, imbalance of uh, estrogen and and testosterone so nagkaroon ng gynecomastia or lumalaki yung breast Okay, for the axilla, you have to ask the client to sit down or a uh, sitting position is the preferred position to check for the lymph nodes if there is enlarged lymph nodes in the axilla. Okay, inspect if there is rashes, if there is infection or uh, inflammation, is there an unusual pigmentation? So, to examine uh, the left axilla, for example, you have to ask the client to relax with the left arm down. So, nakababa lang kung left arm. So, yan. You have to help the client by supporting the left wrist. So, tataas mo lang yan. Or the hand with your left. So, ito. So, nakaganyan. So, dyan ka kakapain mo na yung kanyang uh, axilla. Okay, so this is how you will do it. Okay, palpate for the pectoral lymph uh, nodes, okay, lateral nodes, and the subscapular nodes. Okay, if the central nodes are feel uh, large, hard, or tender, or if there is a suspicious lesion in the drainage area for the axillary nodes, okay. Uh, feel for the other groups of axillary lymph nodes, like again the pectoral nodes, lateral nodes, and subscapular nodes. So these are the common uh, breast masses or findings. No, one is fibroadenoma. Okay, this occurs usually between the age of 15 to 25, usually during puberty and young adulthood. But it can also affect up to age 55. So usually this is a single or maybe multiple. The shape is usually round, disc-like or lobular. So the consistency is maybe soft usually firm, delineated, and very mobile. So, nagagalaw siya. This is usually non-tender. Okay, there is no retraction signs. So, another finding here is breast cyst. Okay, so this occurs between a 30 to 50 years old. It regresses after menopause, except with those uh, estrogen therapy. It can be single or multiple. It is usually round, soft to firm, uh, usually elastic and well delineated. So it is mobile, uh, not, it is often tender, and there is no re retraction. So, just another presentation of breast cyst. Okay, now for the breast cancer. Another findings here is the breast cancer. So, this is an image of <coughs> a breast with cancer. Okay, so a breast cancer advance, uh, it causes 
fibrosis or there is a scar tissue. Oh, so that's why there is a shortening of this tissue that, uh, that produces dimpling. So, kaya nagkaroon ng dimpling. There is a changes in the contour and there is a retraction or deviation of the nipple. Okay. So, other causes of retraction include uh, fat necrosis and mammary duct uh, ectasia. So, you can see here, no, sa cancer, this is the cancer, uh, image of the cancer. There is dimpling, retracted nipple. Okay, this is an illustration of visible signs of breast cancer. So, there is a skin dimpling. Okay, so... Uh, there is a sign of nipple retraction and deviation. So, another visible signs of breast cancer is the edema of the skin, okay, which is usually produced by a lymphatic blockage. Kaya nagkaroon ng ganito. It appears as a thickened, a thickened skin with enlarged pores. Uh, this is also called as peel the orange or orange peel. Diba? Para siyang orange. Orange peel sign. So, it is usually uh, seen in the lower portion of the breast or at the areola. Okay. So, another um, image here is the paget uh, disease of the nipple. This is actually uncommon form of breast cancer that usually starts as scaly and then eczema-like lesion. So it may it may be eroded, yeah, as you can see in this picture. So a breast mask may be present, and then if this is the presentation, you have you can suspect that this is what we call paget disease. Okay. There is a history of spontaneous nipple discharge. Uh, you can use this special technique in assessing the nipple okay, by um, compressing the areola with your index finger and your thumb. Okay, that is placed in radial positions around the nipple. You have to watch for the discharge that appears through one of the duct or duct openings of the nipple. Okay, you have to note for the color, consistency, um, quantity, okay, of the discharge. And then you have to document also the exact location if it is in the left or right nipple. So... Uh, some findings may uh, include uh, milky discharge that are unrelated to prior pregnancy and lactation. This is known as non purpural galactorrhea. Okay. Okay, for those patient or woman that undergo a mastectomy or breast augmentation procedure, it is also important to examine the area, okay, of the breast where the mastectomy was done. Okay, you have to check for the scar, uh, for the color, signs of any inflammation if there is lip edema. Okay, and you have to check for the upper outer quadrant also as well as the axilla. Uh, lymph edema or uh, inflammation of the lymph nodes in the axillary area is usually uh, present after uh, mastectomy due to impaired lymph drainage after the surgery. Okay, if you notice a mass or masses, nodularity, and changes in color or there is inflammation, especially in the incision line, 
this could suggest a recurrence of breast cancer. So, therefore, mas kailangan pa ng um, further evaluation. So, if a woman chooses to form form to do a BSE or breast self-examination, so, you have to provide advantages and explain also the limitations to the client, okay? And then, you have to explain also that, of course, breast masses can be detected by uh, examining their own breast, mm -hmm. although doing a BSE does not actually reduce uh, breast cancer mortality. It will just... Uh, give you an early detection if there is mass, diba? So, at least makapag-check up, okay? At least magamot earlier if there is, okay? So, the proper way of doing BSE or the best time to do breast sap examination is again, uh, 5 to 7 days after the start of menses. This is when the hormonal stimulation and breast tenderness is lower. Okay, to do breast self-examination, you have to instruct the client uh, that the proper way of doing it is to lie down. For example, if she is checking her right uh, breast, she must put or place her right arm under her head okay and then i she can use the finger pads of the three middle fingers on the left hand to feel for the lumps in the right breast okay so same technique yung andon kanina sa pinakita natin um small lung circular motions yung rectangle area dapat uh, walang maskip okay and then, uh, dapat light pressure lang to feel the tissue, no? Not, uh, hindi dapat yung very deep pressure, okay? Okay, so another way of checking is to let your client or to instruct your client to stand in front of the mirror with the hands up. Uh, pressing firmly on the hips, no? And then look for any changes of the breast. Look for the size, the shape, the contour, if there is dimpling, retractions, redness, scaliness of the nipple or the breast skin. And then should examine each underarm while sitting, no? Or standing with an arm only, no? Do like this, yeah. And then, to record your findings, okay, for the contour, again, color, masses, dimpling, discharge, skin, and prior surgery. So, an example of documentation, no, there is a breast symmetry, a color tan without pigment changes, and smooth bilaterally. No masses, no dimpling, lumps, edema, thickening, rashes, or ulcerations. Nipples, inverted, equal in size, point outward, no discharge, no axillary adenopathy detected. So, another uh, example of record findings. Ayan. Breast pendulous with diffuse fibrocystic changes. Single firm 1 by 1 CM mass. It is mobile and non tender with overlying beauty orange appearance in the right breast, upper outer quadrant at 11 o'clock. 2 CM from the nipple. A nipples inverted, no discharge, no axillary adenopathy. Okay. So, let's move on to the health promotion and counseling. 
So, of course, all masses requires careful assessment. So, as a nurse, you have to uh, uh, serve as a patient advocate and help to navigate the complex healthcare system. So, as a nurse, you have to assist your patient to follow up on breast irregularities uh, for accurate diagnosis and, of course, treatment. So, these are some of the important topics for your health promotion and counseling. So, about palpable masses of the breast, assessing the risk of breast cancer and breast cancer screening. Okay, as of review for your health promotion and counseling, you have to include the following, no? A wide range of changes in the breast, of course, for the size, shape, um, color, contour, etc. And what to do if mass or lump is detected? What are the risk factors? Okay, of course, male is a female is uh, has a higher risk of developing um, breast cancer than men. Okay, of course, yung age, ito rin yung risk factors, uh, 65 uh, years old above, no? And then, uh, the BSE or the breast self-examination, a CBE or clinical breast examination, mammography, and MRI, kung kailan ito kailangan gawin. Of course, una mo na is the breast self-examination if mass is detected and then of course consult to the physician this is what we call the clinical breast examination and then um, for patient um, aged 40 above they are recommended to do mammography or if there is problem pa talaga uh, para ma to confirm um, pending mag MRI okay Okay, so to continue with our health promotion and counseling, okay, for the palpable masses of the breast and breast symptoms, okay, for breast cancer, there is a 4% with breast complaints, 5% with nipple uh, discharge, 11% with lump or masses, and all breast masses require careful assessment. So, dapat um, i-monitor. So, breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death, and there is a decline in new cases of invasive breast cancer. So, earlier and more advanced breast cancer in African American women. Okay. So, assessing risk factors for breast cancer, we have modifiable okay, factors. Yeah. Postmenopausal obesity, use of uh, HRT or hormonal replacement therapy, alcohol use, physical inability, and other modifiable causes. You can check your book on page 556. Okay, when we say modifiable, uh, pwede nating uh, i-modify yan para yung risk is maging less. Okay. For non-modifiable risk factors, we have gender, of course, female, diba? we are at least for breast cancer, age, okay. family history, race, uh, genetics, personal history, age of the first full-term pregnancy, early menarche, yan, sila yung mga high risk, late menopause, and breast density. Ito yung mga non-modifiable factors. Okay, so this table shows the factors that increase relative risk. Okay, so there is a greater risk for female. Okay, so, it is greater than 4 relative risk. For those patients age uh, 65, 65 plus versus those uh, patients uh, below 65 years old. For those who have certain uh, inherited genetic mutations, 
or breast cancer gene 1 and 2. Or if there is two or more first degree relatives with breast cancer, so mataas ang risk. Personal history of breast cancer, lobular carcinoma in situ, high breast tissue density on mammogram, and biopsy confirmed atypical hyperplasia. So... Okay, for relative risk, 2.1 to 4, no? In factors are personal history of breast cancer, um, greater or equal to age 40, high endogenous estrogen or testosterone levels or yung mga postmenopausal, one first degree relative with breast cancer, and high dose radiation to chest. So, for relative risk, 1.1 to are those uh, patients uh, with late age at first full-term pregnancy, yan, above 30. So, kailangan mas maaga kayong mag this before 30. Okay, early menarch, uh, below 12 years old. Late menopause, um, greater than 55 years old or above 55 years old. No full-term pregnancy, never breastfeed a child, recent oral contraceptive use, and recent and long-term hormonal replacement therapy. Obesity uh, for postmenopausal and adult weight gain. So, 1.1 to 2, continu continuation. So, use of or exposure to DAS. Uh, personal history of endometrium, ovary, or colon cancer. Alcohol consumption. Uh, height that is tall. Ako, high risk din pala yung mga matatangkad. High socionomic status because of stress. And uh, Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. Uh, These are just a continuation of our uh, risk, no? relative factor. Okay, there is no increased risk or relative risk to 1.3. Yung may mga non-proliferative changes including cyst and ductal tasha, mild hyperplasia or simple fibroadenoma, mastitis, granuloma, diabetic mastopathy. So, small increased risk or relative risk, 1.1 to 2, those who are proliferative without atypicia, uh, including usual ductal hyperplasia, complex uh, fibroadenoma and papilloma. For moderate increased risk or relative risk, greater than 2.2 to 4.2, okay, there is, uh, for those who are proliferative, with atypicia, including atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lubular hyperplasia. Recommendations for breast cancer screening and chemo prevention. There should be individualized and breast cancer gene and gene one and breast cancer gene two screening to do mammography, a clinical breast examination, and breast self ex examination. Also, magnetic resonance imaging and chemo prevention. So, counseling women about breast cancer is a very challenging, no? especially in communicating the risks and benefits. Therefore, you have to use terms that the patient can understand easily. And you can also give them the websites for breast cancer information information that you can found or you can see on page 562 of your HA book. So that ends our uh, presentation or topic about physical examination of the breast. And these are the references. Okay, so uh, before ending this presentation, let me share to you this Bible verse uh, from Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
Thank you, everyone, and God bless.